Hello and welcome to this little video on a quick recap on how to use 2D design. So you'll notice to open it up I'm just searching for 2D design in the little search box and we've got the software open in front of us. Now when you're going to open an existing file you won't be able to double click on that file at school and actually have it open. You have to open the piece of software and then go to file open and find where you've saved your work okay but for this particular video we're going to start from scratch and I'm just going to run through some very basic commands in 2D design so first of all I recommend you always save your file give it an appropriate name so in school where your file might be sent to laser cutters and things like that it's always wise to put your initials into the file name and then something about the file that you're actually going to draw okay um, so that you can refer back to it and also you might do several versions so it's a good idea to just put a number in so you know which version it is so if it's your latest version you can work that out from the numbers so I'm going to click save and that means from now on I just need to quickly save the files and if it crashes at any point I won't lose anything now a quick recap of the screen in front of you you've basically got your commands along the top here you've got your tool windows down left and down right and then you've got your media as we call it which is where you're actually doing your drawing in front of you and what we're going to do now is just run through a couple of things just to remind you or recap on how you'd actually start doing your drawings now one of the most useful things here is the grid you can see the dots all around basically that is grid and grid lock so there's the grid turned on and off and there's grid lock the command now if I double click on grid lock I can actually change how far apart those dots appear and that's really useful if you're drawing very accurate drawings particularly at your GCIC controlled assessments because you want to make sure your drawings are going to be highly accurate and with grid lock switched on as it is now and a line selected that I've just picked from here I can now see that it will only ever start drawing an end drawing on a dot not in between which is really good because that means that I can make sure all of my lines are completely accurate now a couple of things I'll run through again just if I want to select anything I would click on the black arrow here and in this particular case I can click on there and it's surrounded by a series of handles and those handles mean that I can stretch or move that particular Thing. so you can see the end one there means I can stretch it the middle one means I can move it and if this was something like a box I'd also possibly be able to stretch it out to the side as well and if I show you with um, another more random shape here okay what I can do is I can click and I can also flip it horizontally flip it vertically or horizontally and vertically the way around but I can flip it around and I can also rotate it okay now with those others, because I'm on grid lock, if I click on the middle one, you can see, again, it just follows the grid. When I come to rotate, if I go over here, I've got something called a radial lock. If I click that on, then it will only move around in 45 degree steps. So that's really handy if I just want to move it a set amount. Okay, I'll click that off now. and I'll press delete to get rid of that first little sample. Clicking on this line, if I go to property down here, I can actually look at how long it is, what angle it's at, where it starts, where it ends, and I can actually change those numbers as well. So if I wanted to make this exactly 100 millimeters long, update, click OK, and now it is 100 long. Um, I can also see that information down here, where it says distance and angle, when I'm drawing the line. So as I stretch it, you can see the distance is getting longer, the angle is at 90 degrees, and there's another line at 100. Now I'll quickly just run through a couple of other things that I think are going to be very useful for you, particularly as I say on controlled assessments. If I'm now working on a model or working on a drawing for something that isn't made up of 5mm increments, I can change these numbers. So I could make something 102mm long. Okay, and you can see now it doesn't fall exactly on the dot at the end of the line. It starts on the dot, but it falls slightly short. Of this next one and so what I might want to do now is draw a line going across this way and it's going to be really hard to get it to line up with there exactly I can click on a line and I can go over here and click on the attach tool the square with a dot in the center I'm actually going to click off gridlock now and if I click here to start my line it actually finds the nearest point and allows me to draw a line now I'm going to draw it at any angle any length click on it 
go to property and now I'm going to change that angle to 0 degrees and I'm going to change the length to 100 millimeters and update OK and you'll see the line now is perfectly aligned. Now behind all of these little tools which you've used before you'll remember there are lots of other commands so if I were to click on this one and hold the button down on the mouse it will give me all of these different ways of drawing lines. I'm not going to go through those I'm just going to show you that they're there so you can experiment with them a little bit so for circles, for arcs, for all of these different commands you've got lots and lots of options okay and you can play with those until you find what you want to. So moving over to the right hand toolbox here you can see we've got gridlock as I mentioned on and off, refresh so if you've been deleting or redrawing things um, every now and again it might be quite useful to refresh because things may not reappear on screen as expected. Gridlock and as we saw if you double click it brings up the settings and step lock which likewise means that you can move across little spaces, um, set spaces, in this case the step spacing means one millimetre apart so this is like a grid lock but just much much finer at one millimetre points. You've then got the attach tool and this is quite useful particularly if you're drawing situations like this where I want to now maybe draw a line that comes down at 90 degrees so I'm on the straight line here on the left what I'm going to do is double click the attach tool and make sure that perpendicular is actually drawn in for this particular drawing because now what I can do is click near the line and you can see wherever I move my mouse it's only going to draw a line perpendicular to the one it's attached to so I'm actually going to move over to the right as far as I can go and draw that line down and I can do the same over here draw the line down and go over to the right again and overlap the two and I've now got a square that's 102 millimeters up and 100 millimeters across and it's very accurate I know all the corners actually meet up which is especially useful when you're using the laser cutter because that means there won't be any gaps that will remain uncut so what I can do with that drawing is go to the delete tool click the second one in delete between the intersections and there we go it just snips the end off and I've got this particular drawing here and again if I just click on here go to property it's exactly 100 millimeters across and it is exactly 102 millimeters going up okay uh, the radial lock we've seen obviously zooming in and out and various other little things there you can play with okay so you've got some commands in front of you a um, couple of other things that are quite useful for the laser cutter remember the drawings got to be different colored lines so black if you're cutting red if you're just drawing on so it might be in some cases you use a bit of text and you might want to make sure that the text is drawn on I find this useful if I'm making something where it's got lots of component parts so I could actually label the parts with the laser cutter so I know when I come to assemble it which is which uh, in this case I've just drawn a couple of letters I can go up here to where it says fill and I'm going to take the fill away because actually I don't really want the laser cutter to draw inside the letters or to burn an etch inside the letters I just want the actual outlines of the letters like that and that'll be perfectly fine so to make sure they etch rather than cut out I'm now going to go rather than fill colour I'm going to go to line colour and I'm going to turn those red and I would use the standard red there so that it definitely matches up with the machine so if I were to send this to the laser cutter it basically would cut out my square and would draw on the letters A, B and C. Okay, now beyond that I think most things are fairly self-explanatory. Um, I think it is worth just checking on my other video on how to set up your media for the laser cutter. Um, it can be a little bit more involved if you're working from home um, because you'll need a driver installed for that but it means that you'll be able to set it up at home and draw in such a way that when you get into school you'll be able to literally just log on to the laser cutter and cut things straight off okay that'll be nice and easy so I hope that video was useful to you um, have a look out for those others bye